Good morning. Happy Wednesday. Welcome to the Wake Up Flow. Uh, a little change in our schedule this week. Uh, I know it's not public. We don't publish a schedule for these, but in our member session, uh, we had scheduled the set called Between Heaven and Earth, and instead we're actually going to do the eight brocades twice this week. We're going to do a, a somewhat simplified version today, which we'll run through this morning, um, albeit quite a bit quicker than we will later on in the day. And then on Friday, we will do a different version of it um, that is done in the Shaolin tradition, which is a little bit more complicated, uh, a little bit more rigorous, and that version builds in the static postures right into the set. So we typically do some of the static posture work like we did on Monday uh, at the end of our uh, sessions. And this one actually builds it right into the flow. So it's integrated into the individual forms. But well, let's begin today like we often do, just warming up a little bit. Put your feet about shoulder width apart, knees soft and bouncy, upper torso erect, and begin to turn from side to side. Just letting the arms swing free. Get the body temp up just a little bit, get a little fluid moving in the joints, and then we'll take a quick run through one of oh so many versions of the eight brocades. Very traditional routine, been around for some 800 years, was formalized at the end of the Sung Dynasty, in the Southern Sung Dynasty. It was a period of great innovation produce such things as movable type, uh, gunpowder, which back then was principally designed and used for fireworks, although it uh, <laughs> was shortly thereafter used against those folks, um, ending the Song Dynasty. Let's take the hands into loose fists and begin tapping now, tapping on the lower belly and lower back. A little wake up of the energy center. Tapping some acupressure points here in the front and back of the body. We do a good bit of tapping, a little bit different focus to it in Qigong and the dedicated tapping discipline such as EFT, we are usually tapping along the meridian lines and hitting specific acupressure points. Let's take the hand up the body, tapping into that bit of a valley where the shoulder and chest meet. This is a point used tap away stress and anxiety and for us in the movement disciplines we know it as the end of the lung meridian we tap on it to promote immunity among other things but that's the big one associated with the lungs and let's begin to deepen out the breathing taking the breath down deep into the belly and starting that breath in through the nose, if you can. Take the out breath through either the mouth or the nose, but if you can nasal breathe, there are enormous benefits to that. Highly recommend a, a book if you're interested in that topic by uh, an author named James Nestor, N-E-S-T-O-R, simply called Breathe. Fascinating look at bunch of experiments he and a colleague did on themselves to go through some techniques that are formulated around the world. Although the, the end result is it tells us something we probably already knew but don't do. A lot of interesting data behind it. Let's come back down to the belly and begin shifting the weight from side to side. I want to roll across the width of the foot, roll into the inside and outside of each foot. A little strength and flexibility for the ankles. 
anything we can do to work on the feet, ankles, knees. Helps with balance, which in turn helps reduce the risk of falling. And where I am in the upper Midwest, we have a lot of that slippery stuff on the ground already. More falling right now. So that falling risk looms large. And let's float the arms off the body, turn that cap into a reach. Now, instead of the width of the foot, moving across the length of the foot, letting the momentum of that arm swing, pick up the trailing heel. So working heel to toe now. Shrink this movement down. Let's get us back to our starting point. And then let's connect to the breath. Spinal cord breathing. Breathing in, spread the elbows apart, squeeze the shoulder blades together. As you breathe out, hold it all back in and gently round the back. part of the routine, getting ourselves slowed down so that the body follows the breath. Let your breath drive the cadence of the movement. You may not be dead on with my cadence, that's okay. You're breathing either deeper or shallower than I am. That should alter your pace. Take a little turn at the top, just a gentle turn of the upper spine, bringing it back to center as we breathe out. One more. Relax back into that starting position. We call this neutral starting position Uji. So it's relaxed readiness. And we begin with a form called two hands lift the skies. Breathing in, palms lift, turn over at the top, and spreading apart overhead as we breathe out and release down. Breathing in and breathing out. Let me give you an alternate breathing pattern for this one. Breathing in as the hands turn over, breathe out, press overhead, hold there as you breathe in and then breathe out to release down. Either one. I notice a lot of extraneous movement around me right now. Three recently adopted kittens are up, active, and in full play mode. Let's take one more. Toe heel out to a little bit wider stance. Knees are still nice and soft, nice and bouncy. Feet can be straight ahead or pointed out just a little bit. Let the arms rise to the level of the heart. Hold one hand in. 
one's going to draw the bowstring. The other one's going to form an aiming point. Let's take a breath in. And as you breathe out, pull the string, let the body dip down just a little bit. Breathing in, sweep that extended arm across, and then let the arms change places. Breathe out, draw the bow. too fast here. Stay with the breath. Breathe in as you transition. Breathe out and just hold the pose through the end of the out breath. When we do this one on Friday, we'll actually hold in each on each side in the pose for several breaths. For this one, just breath pattern in on the transition, exhaling as you pull the bow, but hold that exhale all the way to the end. Last one. To release out of this, take your string hand, let it float out, and then both hands close in like you're holding a ball right in front of you. And go ahead and toe heel back in to a neutral position. And let's spin that ball, one hand on top, one on the bottom. Take a breath in on the out breath. Palms push away from each other. One goes high, one goes low. Let your eyes follow the high one. Breathing in, transition the hands past each other, changing places, breathing out, looking overhead, separating earth and sky. One more. And then let's recapture that ball. And again, let's spin it so that the hands are on the sides. Breathe in. And then as you breathe out, flatten the palms. Let them come down and pass the body as you look over a shoulder. Breathe in. Pull the hands back forward. Let the backs of the hands meet in front of you. Breathing out, push the palms to the back, let the arms pass the body as you look over a shoulder. The wise owl looks behind. That turn and looking over the shoulder inside your comfort zone. Tighten the neck and shoulders. You may not be able to get all the way around there without pain. We don't want pain. Just take it to a stretch and stop there. One more time. Hands come back one more time as you breathe in and then floating down. As we toe heel out, the hands come to rest on the legs. Dip the body down like you're sitting down. Breath in, on the out breath. Swing the head out to one side and across. Breathing in as you return to the beginning. Breathing out, and back the other way. Swinging the head and shaking the tail. already on the fifth form. Eight. We'll do this in the member flow, which is in person today, as well as on Zoom. We'll be in person up at the Pulse for Health Studios near five corners. An extended version of this, many more repetitions. Let's 
bring it back one more time. And relax back to vertical until heel in, but not all the way. So stay a little wider than the hips. Let's bring the hands to the kidney area. And just give the kidneys a little massage. Take a big breath in as you arch the back just so slightly. And then breathing out. Trace the hands down the outside of the legs. Holding forward as far as is comfortable for you. Breathing out. And breathing in as we arch. Breathing out. Trace down. Back to the breath, breathing in as we rise. Hands float to the back, we arch. Breathing out as we trace down. So it's called bending the waist and holding the feet to cure the hundred illnesses. Very colorful name. One more time. And then simply release. And then toe heel back out to that wide stance. Breathing in, hands come forward, form fists, draw those into the ribs. Take a breath in, breath out, punch one forward. Breath in, hands change places. Hands start just below the ribs. Hands finish just right about shoulder height. Slight upward motion as you punch. Our closing move in this version of the eight brocades is actually the same move we often start our close with. So we'll simply close with the closing form. A couple more punches. And then just draw that one back and release the hands. To healing back into our neutral starting position. Breathing in, hands rise overhead, come up on the balls of your feet. And as you lower the palms, lower the heels. One more time. And let the hands come all the way back down to the lower belly. Stop, hands over hand, hand over hand. Place those over the lower belly. Step in a little narrower than hips. Close your eyes and we'll finish with our usual three deep breaths. third breath. Make that one a nice deep one. And as you release that breath, release the hands back to the sides. Let the eyes come back open. Give everything a little shake out at the bottom. Thanks for joining me for the Wake Up Flow. Have a great Wednesday. Namaste.